Kia ora, Ro Hoskins, Ngati Ho, Ngapuhi, Director here at Design Tribe Architects, and my co-papa is advancing Māori housing aspirations, and in this case, through Nano Fare Tiny Home Solutions. If we look back um, 60 years ago, some of our whānau were still walking into the Ngahere and the Repo, and a week later having a whare. Going back 20 years earlier than that, with the urbanisation of our whānau, we were manpowered into the city through the Manpower Act in World War II. Then we were uh, both encouraged and legislated into the city with Māori Affairs housing. And of course, once you leave your home areas, you lose, first of all, the whenua to build on, and you also lose access to any original materials and technologies that you had. So everything to do with your shelter is determined by someone else. And that was fine when Māori Affairs was active and supportive and Māori ended up in warm, safe, dry homes in the city. They were built of native timber. You still had a quarter acre section. You could still have a mahinga kai and full employment. Uh, so life was comparatively good until the 70s when you know we had the oil shock, high inflation, higher unemployment, Māori being probably the, often the first to be let go and then suddenly you've got the, um, the worst aspects of urban living sort of confronting you with lower incomes. And of course, building costs have increased exponentially, you know, from the 1960s, um, land costs have gone up exponentially. So our whānau from the early to mid 70s have begun to feel those effects of deprivation resulting from spending more on accommodation. And that's gotten worse with the lack of state housing and us not having easy paths back to our rural homelands. Uh, with Tamatapi, which is the National Māori Housing Body that we set up in 2011, um, we, that entity is uh, charged with you know, supporting and advocating for Māori housing solutions across the spectrum. And for this particular project, the Kainga Mukapuna project, we're really just saying, well, OK, one of the solutions that we have uh, at our disposal is the ability to build whare tāpiri or Kainga Mukapuna, which is really taking that uh, original simple Māori whare and the whole tiny house movement and saying, well, at a reasonably low cost and with some technical support from within the Fano, we believe that you can achieve improved living situations on existing sites for 20, 30K as a starter. And then over time, you can add to that investment and add, you know, kitchenette and ensuite and make that initial cabin or, or whare self-contained. So we're, we're really just trying to um, reflect on the tiny house movement and what a kaupapa Māori version of it might be. Kia ora, kō rahi a hau. Pa, I mōa taku taonga mai ki konei, i noho mātou katoa um, nā tamariki, mēnā mokopona kei te atutu. Kei reira e rua nā whare, tēnō tata mātou, i noho ana mātou katoa. Ene e pai no te mea i taua wā i whānau mai nā tamariki o Anania. Ko te hehe o mātou ka noho tata mātou. No te mea i te wā ka pohe pahuri ake ka noho nai Māori rotu i nā papakainga. Ahako ka rei rātou i noho i te papakainga tūturu i whakaaro atu mātou o me pehe ka ho o ko te tahi whare, ka noho nga tamariki, me nga mokopona i roto i nga whare e rua. Kia ora, ko Anania tenana hau, o ngā te whakaue, ngā te tūwhare to te ati haunui a paparangi, ngā te kuta. Our parents bought into Atu Peninsula a few years ago, um, and when we came back from Australia, there was an opportunity for us as a whānau to buy the house next door which worked out really well for us. We had a two, year, three year old then. My brother and sister were living in the same property and our other sister was there. And it just, just made sense for us to all be living communally in the urban city uh, as it was really expensive and still really <laughs> expensive. Some of the benefits would be having whanau to rely on when we needed to, sharing and 
kai and mahi and uh, responsibilities for our pepe. So it was really, really convenient as the Fano grew bigger and bigger. As it grew and as we started having more and more children, the idea of having a papakainga where we could be more sustainable as a whānau as a whole became more practical for us. My name is Rihana. I live in a four bedroom house here in Auckland City with uh, about seven people. So it's me, uh, my sister, my brother-in-law, their three children, and then mine and my sister's mother uh, as well, all here together in this one lovely whare. So because these little kids that we have are getting not so little anymore, they're gonna start needing some space for themselves. And then uh, I'm still here and terrified of going out on my own. <laughs> so the whole project was about finding a solution for this. And we put two and two together about having these funds and thinking why not just build more space outside. Um, and yeah, we're pretty much here at the tail end of the project and we're like, damn, that thing is huge and I get to sleep in it. I feel pretty good about having something concrete built that it isn't like a diminishing return, you know, for everyone involved. When we decided to build a cabin when that was the, the final whakaro, we looked into what they could do to establish that realistically. It's beneficial that we own our own building company, me and Ray, and Rihanna's father is an architect, his mum and myself, we both come from ops and management roles. So it wasn't, there was no shortage of resources in his end. My name is Ray, I am from West Auckland, and I now live in Teratu with my missus and our three kids and her mum and her brother. Uh, so these lived with us since we've been here and then our oldest, she's a teenager now and I think it's more of, she just needs her own space. It's nice to have your family close by all the time just because you can work off each other. We got their mum here, like Rehi's here. If we, like me and Nans wanted to pop out for a couple of hours, we can always ask them beforehand. It's real helpful, it is real helpful. And then the, the whole idea of the cabin was kind of like brought up between everyone. I reckon anyone could do it if they just had a builder, like as a friend or as um, a family member. Like all they need to do is just refer back to them. Like, oh, I don't quite understand this. Um, how, does, how do you go about getting this done? It's always easy for the builder to read the plans and um, just point them in the right direction of how to do it. It is hard. Like, I can say it's easy because it's what I do all day, every day. Um, but for someone that has never been on the tools or knows how to read plans, yeah, it's hard. It's hard to read plans, it's hard to read measurements. That's why you, if you have a builder as a friend or in your family, it's always good to go to them, just ask them. If we go back to our original kāinga, we lived in hapu units, which were collections of closely related whānau, which were not nuclear whānau, and they were designed so that the youngest and the oldest could be supported by all the able-bodied people in the community. So if we fast forward to today, when we've got you know a lot of housing pressure, a lot of social pressure involved with urban living, um, the ability to have extended whānau living not necessarily all in the same house, but on the same site, is of huge benefit to everybody. So for Rihana, you know, he's got the ability to both give and receive support from that whānau unit, and it's no different to anyone else who wants a bit more independence, but likes to have that day-to-day that -day contact and the, all the benefits of extended whānau living. For this particular project, what's really important is that the messages that are being given are that it's not necessarily easy to enhance your kāinga pathway in an urban setting, but there are things that can be done. Uh, that if you look at the process that the Rihana has gone through, uh, he doesn't come with any particular housing knowledge. He's lucky that he's got a, you know, a, a brother-in-law and a father who've got some knowledge. Um, we hope that Fano, um, somewhere in there, in the extended Fano, will have at least a, a builder, 
it's so important that our, our whānau can enhance their living situations uh, to relieve pressure on an existing house, to give our whānau member um, a high quality, warm, safe, dry housing solution from which they can plan their next step. We're offering three different housing solutions which uh, they're not an end in themselves, they're just part of moving people along their own journeys. And that um, once you've achieved one of, one of these three options, then you could, you know, strategize for what your next move might be. And you can do so from a position of relative strength and a bit more confidence. It's kind of this notion of he whare kayakuringa. You know, we, we no longer have access to the repo and the ngahere to build those whare of old, but we can still uh, harness some resources from within our, um, within the whānau, within our own ability to lend, and also harness the skills um, within the broader whānau to help us achieve one of these three housing outcomes. I think the other thing is that as one person, we could never have done it. We've never, you know, we're just like, later. I don't have the bandwidth in my head to do it. But as a whānau of four adults and three children, oh no, five adults, including their dad, we could do this, you know, we could get that stuff and we could access stuff and we could talk about this stuff. So, um, yeah, I think whānau capabilities are important. Um, but we also could put up with each other when we were all grumpy. For me, He Kainga Mokopuna has provided us with a solution that fits our whānau. We've always lived in intergenerationally and I don't see that changing um, as we continue to grow. We might live in different towns, but we've always had a home base to come back to. And for my tamariki, I think that is the most important thing, is you could be anywhere in New Zealand, anywhere in the world, but as long as you have a home base and you feel you have a space there, that's what makes it a whānau home for us.